Let's see what today's angling brings, eh? Roll the intro. First cast, cracked off. <laughs> I'm using the shock meter I used last weekend. So, this place is, uh, it really does push your tackle. I'm fishing with a, a tapered meter. One of these here. You read that right, it's 8 to 40 pound. But you don't use the 40 pound stuff, you kind of cut it off. I only use a rod's length. Uh, it's, it's, say your rod's 13 foot. I would cut it off at 18. That way you have wraps on your reel and you cast them so that there's not enough. So that you're getting it. But there's an awful lot of waste in these things. I mean, all this just gets binned. And for five of these, it's a tenner. So last week I lost four. This week I've lost one so far. What can you do, eh? There's a ledge in front of me where it drops right down to about 22, 25 feet. And you're basically having to cast over that ledge, so... It is what it is. Coming to fish somewhere like Leirne, or anywhere in Ireland or Northern Ireland, that has zebra mussels, you need to step up with your tackle. This is the Dutch Master. 12 foot 8, 60 gram rod, so it's a light enough rod. I suppose on him and this would be classed as like a uh, like a medium to heavy. So this is my go-to rod for most of my fishing here in the urn. Coupled that with the the extremeter reel as you see me buy the, the other fortnight, three weeks, four weeks ago. And that's loaded with a uh, feeder braid. The feeder braid's rated to 18 pounds. So it's quite a, a hefty braid, but it's thin enough, thin. The days of coming here and chucking, you know, four pound line straight through, unfortunately they're over. The zebra mussels will eat you alive, just. bit -wise, I have thorough maggots and red maggots, I have painted casters, I have worm, I have a ton of something special that I might show you later on, if you behave. That's some sweet corn. Mixing the ground bait, I have half a, I have a, basically went half and half with census, or not census, Sonia based black bream and black roach. I figured that because the hybrids were here last weekend, they'll put the black roach in. It's got a nice nutty, hempy smell. So you're getting the nice biscuits and cereal smell of the bream, and then the nice hempy smell of the roach side of it. I've mixed it so it's quite stodgy, it's quite, quite sticky. I want it basically to get down to the depths and then let out. I don't want it kind of dissolving as it falls through the ground, as it falls through the water layers. I want it on the bottom and to dissolve in the bottom to get the fish on the bottom. It is an absolutely beautiful day. <laughs> absolute cracker of a day. Last week when I fished here, the waves were coming in that high, they were sitting on your lap. Hence why there was no footage. Oh. It's also Armed Forces Veteran Day. So if you know a veteran, give him a high five. Obviously from a social distancing perspective, just wave at him or her. I myself shall be having a few beers tonight. Typical Royal Air Force station fashion. I'm going to be drinking Wasteiner with my MSW. So I'm going to drink a few bottles of Wobbly and fall over. I'll update you if we get any fish. One eternity later. 
Another thing that's important if you're coming to uh, this part of the world is rain gear. Because it is wet. Hopefully this is the first fish of the day. I don't think it's big. It's not that big. Yep. Oh. That's how light it was hooked, it just popped out. There you go. First fish of the day. Nice hybrid, about, about a pound and a half, maybe two. Let's catch some more. It's important when you're feeder fishing to pick a spot and cast to it. See that bush? Or that clump of bushes on the island? That's where I'm casting to. I'm hitting the clip at 50 meters. So if you keep casting in that direction, then you build up a better feed. Everyone seems to be catching around me on either side of me, and I seem to be catching very little. I'm not, in, not really enjoying this. <laughs> Wet weather gear is essential. Because not everywhere has nice jetties and platforms, bring your own platform. Makes your fishing a bit more comfortable if you've got a stable and level setup. So bring your own platform. Everything that I have is most of the stuff I have for casting, which is good to look and fix to the seat box. That's brilliant. You know, Diowa do stuff, sensors do stuff, there's a, there's a, there's a whole load of different uh, makes and models of seat box. And they all do something like the trays and stuff they got there. So it's all about getting a comfortable position to set the fish from. But decent wet weather gear is essential. That hybrid boot will drop, drop back bite. The tip just springs like that there. First of the day, hopefully many more to come. Today's weather forecast gives it to be rain like this, then patches of sunshine, then more rain like this. So, lots of rain. See if it's another rain, I think I'm gonna fucking cry laughing.
Hey, blood. Awesome. Just a bit wet. See the wind or the weather coming in. Like you can see clear skies over there, so it just has to blow over. But, excuse me. This means 10 minutes of getting soaked. happens when you, you lose your net, you have to jump off the old platform, land the fish behind. <laughs> is it many size is it any size of a fish? What sort of size is it? That's brave enough. <laughs> Hi. This place is straight up brutal on your gear. I'm going to show you a clip now of the uh, the tapered shock meter. Now, bearing in mind that was a brand new one that I just put on this morning. Not sure how you, close you're going to see that, but that is one shock meter. And you can see that the zebra mussels have basically split it into two. That's how bad the zebra mussels are. They are no joke. Now this shock meter was only put on this morning. So I'm gonna have to replace it now. So far today, I've had four bites, two fish. It is uh, not fishing the greatest. Gareth below me seems to be catching lots of eels. Cecil's got about five or six hybrids. So he's doing not so bad. But I'm struggling today now. Really I'm struggling. Pat Noster style. And even in the Pat Noster, you can see how the, the feeders getting, the, the legs getting destroyed through it. Pat Noster style. Four foot hook length. And as many maggots as I can put on it. Uh, 
<laughs> a brutal day. <laughs> It's a 50 meters. <laughs> 18 seconds it took for a 45 gram feeder to hit the bottom. fishing in deep, deep water at the minute. Might have to switch to a 12 pound straight through shock leader because 10 pound for 5 tapered leaders and the last two times I've fished here I've went through 6 of them so I'm going to have to figure out a more economic solution the water is roasting by the way so I think maybe that's got something to do with the fish not feeding. But. Let me just take a bit of a cloth here to you. Oh. Is that the better until the red happens again? Looking forward to beer. When I get home. This is how, they, this is how much it takes out in your gear. The shreds you're keeping it. Fishing wasn't uh, the best today, but we're going to have ourselves a beer. So let's have a beer. This is to celebrate the uh, Armed Forces Day. So, cheers.